Go up the ladder, go down the chute, into this good-looking gack. Once you get over here, it says, I feel flushed. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Nickelodeon scandals. Nickelodeon telling ABC News, we have no reportable response other than a no comment at this time. For this list, we'll be looking at the first Kids Network's wildest and craziest controversies. That proved even messier than a tidal wave of slime or a Rugrats diaper. Which Nickelodeon scandal shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Lost Film Too Scary for Kids – Crybaby Lane We all know creepy childhood staples like Are You Afraid of the Dark, but fewer are familiar with Crybaby Lane. This TV movie centered on conjoined twins – one good, the other evil – who were locked up, grew ill, and died. Their father then sawed them in half before burying them separately. Because legend has it, anyone caught out there at night on that desolate road can hear the cries of the evil child calling for vengeance from beyond the grave. After Melissa Joan Hart hosted its initial premiere, the film vanished from the airwaves, many assuming it to be lost. Some theorized that parents found the movie too dark, while others wondered if it really existed at all. You're making this up. I know it sounds bad. It is bad. As Reddit started buzzing about the picture, a Nickelodeon representative claimed it wasn't banned, but rather forgotten. Not forgotten entirely, though, as Nickelodeon dug up Crybaby Lane in 2011, rerunning it several times since. Arise, spirit of the dead, from in the other side. Son of Muller, we are calling you forth. Number 9. A Scrapped Series – Christmas in Tattertown Doug, Rugrats, and Ren and Stimpy initiated the golden age of Nicktoons. However, another animated series could have predated them. Doug, you're alive! Oh, goody! Where are we, Doug? Ralph Bakshi rose to fame through adult animated features like Fritz the Cat. With Mighty Mouse The New Adventures, though, he entertained kids and adults alike on Saturday morning. Bakshi was sent to produce an animated series for Nickelodeon loosely inspired by his comic strip Junk Town. Airing in 1988, Christmas in Tattertown served as a pilot for a 39-episode series order. I'm alive. I'm… I'm alive. I can talk. Around this time, Bakshi found himself in hot water for a Mighty Mouse episode where the titular character inhales a crushed flower unintentionally calling illegal substances to mind. Nick began to lose interest in the Tattertown series, which Bakshi acknowledged, quote, just didn't work anyway. Somebody do something! Debbie is leaking! <laughs> I'm sorry! Number 8. The unproduced finale, The Angry Beavers A lot of Nicktoons concluded their initial runs without a proper series finale. With the Angry Beavers, though, there was an attempt to bring a sense of finality to the misadventures of Daggett and Norbert. How? By going as meta as possible. Madoofy brother, why? we're going bye bye Bye-bye. Why-why? Because we are over! Uh, over? Over what? Over! As in done, hey. through, finished, hey. ended, ah. term, and ah. yet. The Beavers would receive word that they're being cancelled, culminating with them going to cartoon heaven and an April Fool's gag. In addition to poking fun at the series ending, the finale would have openly criticized the network and censors for constantly cracking down on the creators. Accept our fate. Accept. <laughs> it's the way of the world, hey. Dale. After all, the cartoon being over gaffs always know what's best. I mean, they made good television of science. Although the idea was initially approved, Nickelodeon pulled the plug mid-production for disobeying network policy. Bye Bye Beavers was never completed or aired, but storyboards and audio have left us with an idea of what could have been. It's like <laughs> immortality without having to show up every day. Exactly. Number 7. Things Get Super Sloppy – Double Dare Getting messy is part of Nickelodeon's brand, but not everyone was in on it. According to Double Dare host Mark Summers, a woman who took a pie to the face in Philadelphia sued, claiming she couldn't have sex anymore. Summers says she got, quote, $25,000 to go away. And honestly, I'm glad they did. If you can't handle a pie in the face, you're just not cut out for slam time, babe. While pie is nothing to cry over, a broken bone is more serious. 
On Double Dare, a kid lied on his medical form, neglecting to mention he had bones like glass, having broken 17 of them. Doing an obstacle course, a bone ended up going through the arm. Mark Summers had to immediately leave the studio so he wouldn't puke on the kid. Luckily, there was a nurse standing by, but Nickelodeon execs were not happy. Another time, Summers thought a kid snapped his neck on the sewer chute obstacle. His father was a lawyer, who insisted that they get the large screen TV prize. I don't know, man. Million dollar lawsuit winnings from Nickelodeon or a zenith from the 80s. Mmm, I'm gonna take the money every time. Number 6. The Expunged Episodes SpongeBob SquarePants SpongeBob has ignited a surprising number of scandals, including discussions regarding the character's sexuality. Fans were caught off guard again in March 2021 when Paramount Plus launched. A classic episode was noticeably missing from the SpongeBob library. A rep revealed that Season 3's Midlife Crustacean was taken out of circulation in 2018 due to story elements deemed inappropriate. SpongeBob Patrick, do you mind? Let's continue this conversation in private, Patrick. I think some people are eavesdropping! Well, how rude of some people! While the rep didn't reveal which elements caused a fuss, it was most likely a scene involving a panty raid. Nickelodeon also held off on releasing Quarantined Crab, a quarantine-themed episode that was originally set to air around the same time COVID hit. Anyone could be a carrier. Itchy skin! He's got clam flu! What? No, no, I was just scratching. <laughs> Freezer! <laughs> While it eventually aired, Quarantined Crab currently isn't on Paramount Plus either. Nick can pull episodes, but they can't erase them from our minds. We think. Show's over, Keepskate! <laughs> Number 5. Angelique Bates' experiences weren't all that pleasant. All that. Standing out with her comedic timing in sketches like Randy and Mandy, Angelique Bates became an inspiration to aspiring female black comedians, being the first in the show's history. It's the chocolate. Moms tend to overlook the benefits of chocolate, mainly that it tastes very, very good. Sadly, she was also the first cast member to leave all that. Viewers wouldn't understand why until years later when Bates revealed that her mother had been physically and mentally tormenting her during the show's run. The producers were apparently well aware of this, as Bates claims it took place right in front of them. Sometimes they could even hear me yelling, but nothing was done to help me until approximately 1996 when CPS was called. The adults tasked with protecting the young performer urged her not to speak to Child Protective Services. Bates stayed quiet about her ordeal for almost two decades before opening up to the public about it. They were creating these stories about me, and I just wasn't saying anything, and I was just taking hits and taking hits. But when I started speaking my truth, which people didn't know and some did know the truth, they started coming out and defending me. Number 4. You can't make fun of adoption. You can't do that on television. You Can't Do That on Television gave birth to many Nickelodeon staples, including Green Slime. The Ghostbusters team reportedly tried suing creator Roger Price over the slime, although the Canadian sketch series predated that blockbuster comedy by five years. I feel so funky. Spangler, I'm with Bankman. Oh. You got slime. That's great, Ray. Save some for me. While you can slime people on television, poking fun at adopted children proved too controversial for Nickelodeon. In one episode, a senator calls an orphanage, saying that he wants to return his adopted child now that he's completed all the chores. Yeah, he's done everything that pretty well uh, had to be done. Oh, so, yeah, you come over here and you, you take him back. What? What do you mean adoption is forever? In addition to making light of child labor, the episode sends a pretty mean-spirited message to the actual adopted children watching at home. Nick pulled the episode from U.S. airing soon enough, while co-creator Jeffrey Darby admitted years later that it, quote, went too far. How do you get away with it? I don't know. Luck, I guess. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just as a laugh. Number 3. Jamie Lynn Spears' Pregnancy, Zoe 101. Some know her as Britney Spears' younger sister, but to Nickelodeon viewers, Jamie Lynn Spears is Zoe Brooks. Zoe, something's bothering you. Yeah. If you figure out what it is, let me know. 
In a 2007 interview, the then 16-year-old sitcom star made a startling announcement. She was 12 weeks pregnant and her boyfriend of two years, Casey Aldridge, was the father. They're freaking out right now. They're not going to try. It's Nickelodeon. They, you know, they're not going to try to cover this up. They're, they're either, they're either going to deal with it or dump her. Given Spears' status as a teen idol, not all parents were happy to hear this, insisting that Nickelodeon pull the fourth season of Zoe 101, which was ready to air. Nick ultimately released the season to record ratings, although this was also the show's last. While many assumed that the series was canceled because of the scandal, Spears says that her contract was already set to expire and filming wrapped about six months before learning of her pregnancy. Wait, I thought PCA was having their prom tonight. We are. I blew it off. Number 2. Not So Happy Happy Joy Joy – The Ren and Stimpy Show Ren and Stimpy was an immediate success for Nickelodeon, but creator John Chris Faluzzi was also a source of constant confrontation. From the show's suggestive content to missed deadlines to the toxic work environment, the writing was on the wall for Chris Faluzzi. Aren't you guys lucky to have such a kind, loving master as I? There now. You happy? The pulled episode Man's Best Friend was seen as a breaking point, with Chris Faluzzi leaving his creation. Production shifted from Spumco to Games Animation, with Bob Camp now leading the charge. Although Chris Faluzzi maintained a following in the animation world, he fell from grace in 2018 when former Spumco artists Robin Bird and Katie Rice accused him of sexual harassment and grooming when they were underage. He just started hiring kids, you know, because they're going to have that devotion to him. Katie is the princess of sexy girl artists. I had matured a bit. I could tell that, you know, the stuff that has been going on for the past five years is not normal. In 2020, a Ren and Stimpy reboot was announced, but given the controversy, John Kay will have no creative input. You sick little monkey! Why, I oughta... <laughs> Hey, it works! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable, or we guess dishonorable mentions. Casting Controversy – The Last Airbender A show grounded in East Asian themes gets an adaptation with white actors as the heroes. That wasn't a good play. I'll say. No kidding. Horrible. You said it. For a good time, call Tommy's mom, Rugrats. Artists apparently drew naughty photos of Dee Dee Pickles in the Nick Studios bathroom stalls. Still, what have you done? Bringing down the house, the Loud House. Creator Chris Savino was fired over misconduct accusations. I never want to see you again, Benny! Banished episodes, Rocco's Modern Life. Leapfrogs and Hef in a Handbasket have us wondering if this show was really for kids. Oh, Rocco. Don't you like my eyes? Hmm? Oh, yes. They're lovely. Touch them! <laughs> yes. Oh, my. Very soft and veiny. Oh, you always know exactly what to say. Dark Harvest, Invader Zim. This twisted episode would come up during the Scott Dolesky trial. <laughs> oh, my organs! <laughs> Inferior human organs! Ball oh, my squeedly spooch! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Quote, I'm glad my mom died. iCarly. Dan Schneider created several hit shows for Nickelodeon, including iCarly. However, his relationship with the network ended in 2018 amid allegations involving temper issues and feet. And I'll, I'll read what you write here. You write, he was mean-spirited, controlling, and terrifying, and prone to make grown men and women cry with his insults and degradation. In 2022, iCarly star Jeanette McCurdy chronicled her troubling history with her abusive mother. She also discussed the creator, i.e. Schneider, accusing him of pressuring her to drink as a minor, giving her a non-consensual massage, and more. McCurdy reprised her role on Salmon Cat, where she developed a rivalry with Ariana Grande, claiming her co-star was allowed to pursue other projects while she wasn't. Uh, oh, Cat! 
Ouch, you're back. Uh, Robbie was just singing me a little song he wrote called- I know what it's called, he wrote that song for me. Cat! I'm swell, me! When Sam and Cat was abruptly canceled amid a risque photo scandal, McCurdy claims Nickelodeon offered her hush money to stay silent about Schneider's behavior. She turned it down and later told her story in a book. I think I've chosen a path of integrity. And it hasn't always been easy. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.